Lord. Isn't it wonderful to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Amen. Amen. Would you just stand with us and let's just sing a hymn of praise together.
And then, then Lord is, seems like it just stays full at all times. And, and we have even new names this morning. Uh, Arnold Underwood, we put him on the list last week. We're praying for him for uh, having issues with his eyes. And uh, he has been in the UK, in, actually in the hospital since Friday them uh, looking at his eyes and trying to find out what is going on there. And he also had a knee surgery scheduled soon too, so he's kind of facing some hard times. Um, Randy's mother, her name is Laverne Bowling. We want to remember her in prayer this morning. Uh, Russell Grove, that's Wilma Appleman's brother, uh, has had a stroke and they found a, a tumor as well. I want to remember Robbie East, uh, the name is again to us this morning. He's is, is under conviction, running from the Lord. We just pray the Lord just comes and settles on him. And then uh, you look around this morning, and Tom Stinson's not here, and that's very unusual and not feeling well this morning. And uh, there's some other, other names I, I haven't heard uh, anything else about uh, Jim Hunt. I haven't talked to Wanda about. Where, where he is in his treatments. I continue to remember Tommy Jett and his uh, treatments as well for the throat cancer. Pastor Wilma seems to be doing better and better every day and uh, looking forward to having her back. But uh, in God's time, not in our time, we want her, we want her well and strong. So to continue to remember her and uh, Pepper's father, I just talked to her just a couple minutes ago. She said he's doing well and uh, they're going to start his therapy tomorrow and hopefully he gets to come home uh, very soon. So remember that as well. Are there any other requests this morning? Gail message this morning said she wasn't feeling good. Okay. So Gail, mm -hmm. uh, not here this morning, not feeling well. Mindy and her kids have got all got sore throats and uh, seasonal things again told them we didn't want to hear just keep it home <laughs> continue remember Jan Barber. Jan Barber. Uh, I, I was going to mention that that if you take one of the bulletins this morning and the address where she is at uh, UC Medical Center that address is there and you send her a card or a letter or something to encourage her she's already had uh, one surgery and they're getting ready to have another one doing a skin grass and uh, I, I, part of my training was when I was on the volunteer fire department one time was to go and visit the burn board and watch what they do and I don't know how those nurses and doctors do that day in and day out. Uh, it's hard, heartbreaking just to think about something. She says possible that that done damage damage down to her tendon, so yes, she so got she still got a road to travel. Damage down to the tendons and the nerves, yes, and it's a, it's a long long recovery for the kind of burn. So anyone else? I'm gonna ask you to stand. We'll sing a prayer course together, and then I'm gonna ask Brother Bud if you will come and offer a prayer.
life it's difficult enough for we Christians that have God I just had a funeral Thursday in Circleville a man 91 years old and I think he had four or five daughters I told him at that funeral I've never gotten used to death just one of those things I've never gotten used to the grief, the sorrow and yet people without Christ they have to face those same situations that we as Christians face but they don't have God to turn to and so this morning I'm just thankful that I know who Jesus is I'm glad that I know him as my own friend and personal savior a lot of requests this morning I hear him so bad, sometimes I hear him, sometimes I don't, so I have no idea about all of the names, and I look at the list here, and there's a lot of names, you know more about it than I do, but let's pray, and ask God to help us, you can pray also, okay, just, just talk to Jesus this morning, it's okay, it's okay, talk to Jesus, Father, we come into your presence this morning, through the shed blood of Jesus Christ, it's through the shed blood that we have remission for our sins. And so we rejoice in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. The fact that he came and the reason he came was that he might die. And he died that we might live. That we could have eternal life through faith in Jesus Christ. And this morning you heard all of these needs and all of these requests. Father, you heard every one of them. You see the list here on the podium. You know each name. You know every individual. And I pray, Lord, that you would visit every home, every person, every situation through your divine power, through your divine presence, and that you would meet needs this morning we have gathered here in this sanctuary, but you're not limited just to this sanctuary. You're able to be everywhere. That's awesome. That's amazing. But we believe that's true. Yes. And so this morning, Father, through the power of the Holy Spirit and even through ministering angels, I ask, Father, that you would visit every home, every person, every situation, be with Wilma today, I pray, Lord, that you would continue the healing upon her physical body. She's been through a lot, but Lord, you're helping her, and we thank you for that. And so this morning, Lord, by faith, we place our hand upon the head of Wilma and ask that in the name of Jesus Christ, that you would touch her, that you would give her healing, extend her life, increase her strength, until she would be able to come back and be able to shepherd the flock as she desires to do. We pray this in Jesus' name. Have your way in this service this morning. We welcome the Holy Spirit. We ask that you would come. Lord, do something special, something that man could not take credit for. Do something special this morning. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. You may be
deep within. I plead for patience in my trials and more sorrow for my sin. A deeper faith in you, dear Lord, please give me every day. Let me find joy in my journey and more patience when I pray. This is my prayer. Lord, when this day is through, was I
you folks must be living right. We had an inch of snow in Cincinnati, and it was still dumping the snow when I left. And I drove out of it about Georgetown, I guess. But uh, I get down here, and all you're getting is rain. You must be paying your tithe or something. <laughs> I have no idea. I'm getting some bounce somewhere here, some echo somewhere. Um, <clears throat> I have no idea how this is going to turn out. Wilma and I both have respiratory problems. And, uh, and then Carol and I, my wife and I, came down with the crud a while back that left us with a cough. And so we sat in our recliner, since we're empty nesters now, <laughs> and she coughed, and I would cough. And I mean, that's kind of how we spend our evening, Roger, just in a cough, in a, you can't talk because you're coughing, you know? You guys act like you don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> it's good to be here. It's good to be here. Um, this church and I have a history that goes back before uh, Maryland Rhodes uh, kind of filled the pulpit here for a while before you got a pastor. And uh, I see new faces. I see some. I see some other faces. <laughs> I was going to say old faces, but I don't want to get in trouble. The first thing, you know. I'm an evangelist, and last fall I incorporated a little course before the message. A little course that we learned in the Sunday school years ago. You know it. And so we're going to sing it. And if you'll sing this course to God every day, every day, as you remember it, I believe it will enhance your spiritual life. You see, it's not the it's not the large things that come into play in our spiritual walk as much as it is the little things. And here's the course. Sing it with me. Don't just look at me, okay? I know I'm handsome, but you guys are still laughing. I don't know. I'm kidding. Here it is. Into my heart. Sing it. Into my heart. Sing it to him. Come into my heart. Lord Jesus. Come into Hebrews chapter 2. I want to begin the reading at verse 1. Do you mind standing for the reading of the scripture this morning? Hebrews chapter 2. Beginning with verse 1. And the writer, writing to 
the Hebrew people in verse 1 said, therefore, and he's talking about those things that he had been talking about in chapter 1. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord, and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him? For the text this morning, verse 3, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? Father, add your blessings to the reading of the word. Touch your servant one more time today. Touch the hearing audience. Lord, I pray that the Holy Spirit would do what I can't do. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. <coughs> I believe as I look at this admonition, ladies and gentlemen, that it is written for believers. The reason being that the writer includes himself when he writes the word we. How shall we? Escape, And of course, the writer was a Christian. And he's writing to these other believers when he says, how shall we escape? The danger here is the, that of neglecting, neglecting our salvation. Understand that the author did not write the word rejecting. It wasn't the fact that they were rejecting the salvation. The problem was they possibly were neglecting their salvation. He is not encouraging sinners to become Christians in this scripture, but rather he is encouraging Christians to pay attention to the great salvation that they have already received. Don't neglect your salvation. In verse 1 of chapter 2, lest we should let them slip, has been translated, lest we drift away from them. I understand that uh, Many of you do not get out and visit other churches and for the most part you're here. But allow this preacher to say to you this morning, ladies and gentlemen, that there is a great drift that is happening within the church world. People that one time were very sincere about their walk with Christ now have become careless and indifferent. More spiritual problems, you see, are caused by neglect than perhaps any other failure on the part of believers. We neglect God's Word. We, we neglect prayer. We neglect worship with God's people and we neglect other opportunities for spiritual growth. As a result, we begin to drift. May I ask you a question this morning, and I certainly don't want to upset your apple cart whatsoever. But as you look at your spiritual life, are you closer to Christ today than you were when you began? I think that's a legitimate question. I think every one of us need to take a, a survey, if you will, 
review our own spiritual life to see where we are at in our walk with Christ. You see, the anchor, which is Christ, it doesn't move. If there's any drift, my friend, it's on our part. It's never on the Lord's part. I mean, He is sure. He is steadfast. He is an anchor, if you will. He doesn't change. The scripture verifies that. And so therefore, my friend, if there's any drift, any lacking in our spiritual life, it's not his fault. But it's on our part. There was a pastor one time that preached a series of sermons on the sins of the saints. Interesting topic, isn't it? The sins of the saints. He was reprimanded, or reprimanded by a member of the church congregation. And that member said, after all, pastor, Sin in the life of a Christian is different from sin in the lives of other people. To which the pastor responded, yes, yes, it's different. It's worse in the life of a Christian than it is in the life of a sinner. What is different about this salvation, this great salvation that the writer is talking about? What is different about this salvation through Christ? Why is it different from other religious beliefs? And allow me to say this morning, my friend, you know and I know that there's all kind of religions today. I mean, they are infiltrating our country from other countries and they're bringing their religious beliefs with them. And if we're not careful, there's a tendency to say, well, they go to church. Well, they worship their God. And if we're not careful, there's a tendency to say, well, they must be all right. They go to church. They worship their God in their way. But ladies and gentlemen, if we are truly born again Christians, ladies and gentlemen, there is one way. Come on, guys. There is one way. Amen. And Christ is the way. He is the one that has provided salvation. What about this great salvation? How is it different? Well, ladies and gentlemen, this great salvation, first of all, provides forgiveness. I live in a predominantly Catholic area there in Cincinnati. And my, those people flock in there for mass Saturday night, sometimes Sunday. I mean, they are probably more faithful than some Protestant church people. Come on, guys. I can't even get an amen this morning. I mean, they are faithful. But the problem is, ladies and gentlemen, they walk out of there even after they confess their sins to another man that he himself is struggling with his own sins. Amen. And they walk out of there with the same burden of sin that they had when they came to church. You see, my friend, there is a great need in the human race for forgiveness. We are sinners. We needed forgiveness. In spite of humanity's ignorance and denial of its existence, the effects of sin's existence is everywhere around us. Man, I never thought that our world would become so corrupt. And by the way, Washington is not exempt from it. I thought you'd run the aisles and shout on that one. May God help us. I mean, it's everywhere. 
Here's what the psalmist David said in Psalms 51 verse 1. Behold, I was shaken in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. I was born with this sin problem. Amen. From birth, our being is polluted because of the fall of Adam and Eve back in the Garden of Eden. We start our life out of step with our Creator. Wrong from conception. We don't start out right, ladies and gentlemen. We start out wrong. When I was a kid, I was born and raised in Benton County there in southern Ohio. And I was born right on the tail end of the Depression. <coughs> and in those days, <coughs> you could go into the grocery store and get your groceries on credit. It was interesting. This uh, I, I don't know how we made it before computers. I, I don't know how we did that. <laughs> but that store owner had a little tablet thing that had, you know, he could uh, write everything down on the charge account. And then at the end of two weeks, which was when my dad got paid, which was not very much, he would then go in and pay the account off. Whatever he had purchased during that two weeks was charged to the account. But ladies and gentlemen, he was accountable for the things he had gotten. It was his charge. And at birth, you and I start out with charges to our life's account. A sin debt that we are responsible for. The problem for us is that we owe the debt. The problem we had, we had no way to pay the debt. You couldn't pay this sin debt. But the good news is Jesus paid the debt for us. When he died on Calvary's cross, that's a good place to get blessed if you wanted to get blessed. Right there. He paid the debt. But to claim this grace of forgiveness, you and I must turn to Christ by faith, admitting our guilt, believing that Christ is our Redeemer. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7 Paul said in whom we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Thank God for the blood this morning. There is power in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are not without hope. We can find forgiveness in this great salvation that was provided not by turning over a new leaf, not by trying to do better or have good works, but it was provided by God himself in order to redeem you and I. But then also this great salvation provides something else. It provides transforming power I mean, if you'd have known me before I became a Christian, you probably wouldn't recognize me. And I know you all have always been saints. I understand that. But I wasn't. I needed a Savior. And ladies and gentlemen, this salvation provided what I needed. It provided a transforming power. I became a new creature. Christ came to change us. To give us a brand new life in Him. The story of the demon-possessed man there in Mark chapter 5 is a perfect example. That man in the tombs was under the power of an unclean spirit. The short of it, the devil had possession of him. The effect was a raging frenzy. He was raving mad. He was living among the graves of dead people. Can you imagine? I, I thought about this man. What a terrible, terrible life. 
to live. He was strong, ingovernable. No man could bind him. Cords would not hold him. Neither could chains and feathers of iron restrain him. He had such strength because of this demon influence in his life. He was a terror and torment to himself and to those around him. And by the way, ladies and gentlemen, the devil is a cruel master to those that are led captive by him. But Jesus came to set the captive free. And he proved it in this story by not just giving him ten steps to a better life, but Jesus came to set this captive free. And he proved it in the story by transforming this man into a sane, decent citizen that was able to return to his home and probably his family. A new creature in Jesus Christ. I'm not the same man. And if you're saved, you're not the same man or woman either. You have been changed Amen. by the transforming power of Jesus Christ. Paul certainly had it right when he said in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become knew. One of the things that convinced me that I was saved after I went to the altar and prayed and asked God to forgive me, one of the things that convinced me was how different I was. You're looking at me like deer in the headlights. I was a changed person. My conversation changed. The chains of habits broke. I mean, the things that I used to like, I didn't want to do anymore. And the things that I had shunned away from, I found out that those things I wanted to do, like going to church and being around Christians. William H. Williams said this, if we or the world could be saved through human kindness or clear thinking, Jesus then either would have formed a sensitivity group and urged us to share our feelings, or he would have founded a school and asked us to have discussions with one another. But knowing the ways of God, the way of the world, and the persistence of human sin, he took up the cross, called disciples, gathered the church, and made us follow him down a complete different path of freedom. I, <clears throat> I've been saved since 1967. And for the life of me, I can't understand people that say they want to be Christian, and yet they want to dabble in the world and sin. And I'm losing the crowd, and I don't mean to. I'm just preaching. I mean, if you can understand that, how people say they want to go to heaven, and yet they keep playing around with sin. That's good preaching, but all I'll say my own amen. May God help us. You see, Jesus came with this salvation, providing the means of us being transformed. I mean, the world has seen enough of sinning religion. It's time that the church come out of the sin business and stand up and be Christ-like in the day that we're living in. Thank God, salvation delivers us from the power of sin. It doesn't have dominion over us anymore. Amen. I, I mean, we are 
new creatures in Jesus Christ. But also, ladies and gentlemen, this salvation that's been provided that we are to protect, that we are to give heed to, this salvation provides us with an eternal inheritance at the end of our life. Romans chapter 8, verse 16 and 17, the Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. And Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 19, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. And Eugene Peterson in his writing said it like this, if all we get out of Christ is a little inspiration for a few short years, we're a pretty sorry lot. <laughs> Come on, guys. But the truth is that Christ has been raised up, the first in a long legacy of those who are going to leave the cemeteries someday. I was having that committal service outside of Circleville Thursday. I said, I feel sorry for people that think this is the end. The grave. Nothing else. I said, you know, if this is the end, that's pretty cold. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we that are Christians, come on guys, we have a hope that reaches beyond the grave, reaches beyond this veil of tears. It reaches into eternity. And we believe, ladies and gentlemen, someday, if we die here, we're going to come out of the grave someday with a new body. Yeah. Man, I can stand that. <laughs> come on, guys. Some of you look like you could too, but I've put this crowd over. Just a new body. I feel sorry for the religionists that have forsaken the Bible as God's word to man. I'm glad I've got some promises. It is happening in homes. It's happening in churches. It's happening on educational campuses. Forsaking the Bible. Forsaking God. But what hope do they have in the world to come if we don't have this promise of eternal inheritance after this life is over. The chief joy for the Christian in the world to come is rest, victory, happiness, perfection. Well, I thought you guys would start feeling better. I mean, that's waiting for us. That's waiting for us. The Christian hope demands nothing of time or earth, but it seeks its all in the world to come. There shall I bathe my weary soul in seas of heavenly rest and not a wave of trouble roll across my peaceful breast. I have no idea what's going to happen in Washington. And you don't either. But ladies and gentlemen, I rest in the fact that I know God is still in control and he knows his children by name and the very hairs of our head are numbered. And ladies and gentlemen, he promised that he would never leave us nor forsake us, that he would be with us to the end of the age, my friend. And I'm standing on that. I don't know what you're standing on, but I'm standing on that. Praise the Lord. But then finally, ladies and gentlemen, this salvation is great because a great price has been paid for. You see, religion, if you talk about religion, religion is man doing. 
But salvation is God doing for man. Amen. The psalmist said in Psalms 21 verse 5, His glory is great in thy salvation. Honor and majesty hast thou laid up on him. Remember that the salvation of man is God's in the conception of it. Man wasn't born into this world and said, well, I, I'm going to figure out how I can get to heaven. No. Man was born into the world. He sinned in the garden. And God had already a plan in place. He said, I'm going to send my son Jesus to be the sacrifice to provide salvation. He first conceived the idea of redeeming the rebellious sons of Adam. Before Adam, God had planned the way of their salvation. From the majestic mind of the infinite God, the first thought of salvation sprang. And it was he who sketched and mapped it all out, settling the way by which they should be redeemed, arrange, arranging the place, the day, the hour, the means by which humanity should be converted, fixing it all according to his eternal purpose. You remember Jesus in his earthly ministry? Repeatedly he'd say, my time's not yet. I'm talking about God's time clock. Jesus said, my time's not yet. When my time comes, it'll happen. I believe in the second coming. Amen. This is a whole way of searching it. Yeah. I believe in the second coming. Yeah. I believe, ladies and gentlemen, that in due time, not even the angels know. Jesus doesn't know. But in his time, and we're getting close probably. Come on, guys. It's going to happen. Paul said in Romans chapter 5, verse 6, For when we were yet without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. And again, Eugene Peterson said this, Don't you see that you can't live however you please, squandering what God paid such a high price for? I mean, Jesus gave his life, the Son of God gave his life for this salvation, ladies and gentlemen. And yet man, in his willfulness, in their rebellion, they laugh, they scoff, they, they poke fun at Christians, acting like they've got it all together. Man, I see some of the things that are going on in our world, and then, Roger, I'm reminded, someday they're going to have to stand at the judgment mm -hmm. right. and give an account of their actions. When we stop believing in God and the Bible, then the sacredness and reality of the crucifixion of Christ holds little or no value. Right. When we stop believing in this, when we stop believing in God. And by the way, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not the sharpest pencil in the stack, but some of you don't look too healthy either. <laughs> the farther man and humanity gets away from God, the dumber they get. And the reason is, ladies and gentlemen, God is the beginning of wisdom. And when we forsake God, we do dumb things. We make dumb decisions. And ladies and gentlemen, destruction is the end. 
But aren't you glad for this great salvation? I rejoice in it today. I am thankful. I am so thankful that God looked down into the little county of Benton County back out in the country and found me and changed my life Amen. because I had faith in him. Thank God. Amen. I'm glad I'm a Christian today. Amen. I'm glad I know who Jesus is. Let's stand together. <coughs> If we neglect, can I just ask you a question in passing? How are you doing in your spiritual life? And I'm not trying to unchristianize anyone. But how are you doing? Have you become neglectful?
I'm here to try to help you. Preacher, I just need some prayer. And maybe this morning, you just need to come to the altar and pray. Lord, I'm sorry for my neglecting. I'm sorry that I've drifted. I'm sorry, Lord. With the help of God, I'm going to get back on track. I'm going to spend time with you. I'm going to spend time with the Word. I'm going to get my prayer life back in order. Maybe you need to pray. Anyone want to raise their hand this morning? Anyone at all? Father, we come into your presence. I've tried to preach the message that you impressed upon my heart. And Lord, I pray this day that you would guide us and direct us and keep us in your care. Help us to be Christian throughout this day. Wherever we go, whatever we do, help us to be Christian, Christ-like in all that we do and say. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I get you. and we would make sure that those fireplaces had plenty of fuel and there was a great roaring fire in those fireplaces and what happened when you neglected that fire yeah. it would go out yeah. today let us begin to stir to those ashes Amen. rekindle that fire Amen. Let it be your prayer that God just rekindles that fire. You have the fuel. You have God's word. Let's pour that into yourself today. The altar is still open as we pray in this closing prayer. If you want to come, if you're not, if you don't want to, the Lord knows where you live. He'll come visit you. I am sure he does me quite often. So if you just bow your heads with us, let's just pray. Dear Heavenly Father, today as we close this service and, and prepare to go our way for, for the afternoon, Lord, we pray that you would just settle down. Yes, us. do it, Lord. Do it. Lord, remind us yes. that we need to tend the fires. Mm -hmm. That we need to stir through the ashes and, and yeah. And get those embers to glow again and we need to pour on more fuel and Lord that we be a raging fire in each and every one of us and then we go out into the public people know there's something different about us there's a burning desire to spread your word to witness for you to reach out to others to care for each other to love each other Christ said that's how the people would know that you're mine through your love one for another. Lord, help us to show that kind of love today. Rekindle that in our hearts today. Go with us from this place today. Bring us back to your worship tonight. Lord, and for everything that we do, we want to give you honor, glory, and praise. We want you to get that honor, glory, and praise. Hide us behind the cross. Don't let people look at us, but help them to focus on you. For it's in Jesus' sweet name we pray. Amen.